Hey there, here's a quick demo of where I'm at with uh, TextMesh Pro. Uh, first thing I'll do is just type in some text in the string box. Okay, so I've just typed the text. Uh, first thing to show um, is I've actually got word wrapping in there right now so if I disable it uh, then the whole string is going to be typed on a single line as you can see here it's kind of tiny little text uh, but if I enable word wrapping go back here and actually if I enable it then it does the wrapping now the wrapping right now in terms of the the width it's not necessarily arbitrary but it is set right now on this line length which is in uh, I guess point size so it's in relationship to the size of the font but that's just for testing or I guess for the first implementation um, this could be attached to a collider uh, that would define the region or the width um, so right now I'm just comparing if you know as you're typing if the length of each line gets to be longer than this then backtrack to the next space and as it finds the space that's where it cuts the line wrapping so if I change this manually um, you can see that I'm changing it kind of fast right now but you can see it's changing the wrapping okay so I'll set it at 60 so we can show that. Um, so in terms of features, uh, this is the XML file that contains the font definition. This is the uh, material that basically has the distance field uh, bitmap attached to it. Uh, default color, that's basically the color of the main text itself. Um, font size, basically same thing. It affects the word wrapping as well because I'm looking at every time the lines being created and looking how wide it is comparing it to that length and if it's bigger then I wrap it um, so let's go back to 40 point size uh, character spacing obviously affects it as well um, line spacing I changed how the line spacing is being handled and now it's actually based on the actual spacing between each lines which is more consistent with how I guess in theory unity is handling it um, so you can see here so spacing of zero um, line justification is in so right now it's left justified and center justification and basically right justified the anchor position this is actually more accurately done like unity does it now so based on the font definition, the zero zero corner is right there. And then the height of the font, like in this case, I think it's like 100, which is about here. And the baseline is at like 79, which is about there. So they leave space in the font definition up here and down here, which is why it's kind of off. But if I go like bottom, let's say left, same thing. It's about the same spacing above and below. And that's actually how Unity does it, and, and I think that's the proper way of doing it. But anyway, um, the reason why I switched to this implementation is because, let me uh, cut and paste this text here so I don't have to retype it and show what I'm saying. Um, previously, if I go A, C, E, like all lowercase letters, um, the way I was calculating where the corners were is I was looking at the mesh so if you first started by typing lowercase letters then this would be the top left and bottom right for example but as soon as you typed something like the letter um, Y go back here now the Y extends below so this would cause me to shift my anchor positions which would actually push these letters up um, and then as soon as you typed an uppercase letter like this or these two which are actually of maximum height then it would actually push it down the whole 
reason I bring this up is if you had started typing, let's say, A, C, and then you went T, it would shift up and down, and it would look kind of goofy as you're editing to see the text shift up and down. So now, based on this new method, regardless of what you type first, the text will never move up and down or bob or whatever. So this is actually a much cleaner implementation. So let me put the string back in. So, um, so the word wrapping is implemented, all that stuff in the, is in there. Uh, let me show the last thing. So if I go here and I pick example, and I enter a color code, like orange, and slash color. Um, so you can type the color stuff. Um, and if I go here and I change the base color, it will change the main color, but not where you have HTML color codes in there. Um, so let me pick, I guess, something. Like this. So now you have control over the main color, then the HTML color, and then I added the override here, which allows you to override all the HTML colors in case you wanted to do like a mouse over highlight or something of that nature. So anyway, so that's um, pretty much all the stuff I have so far. The um, one thing I have to work on right now is the way that a word wrapping is implemented is I actually, as the, the mesh is being created, I go through each of the letters and then um, let's say the word how doesn't fit here. So as it's trying to fit H fits, O fits, O, W doesn't fit, then I backtrack, you know, back to the O, back to the H, and I find the nearest space, and then I insert a line feed where the space is to cause the wrapping to happen. The way I'm doing this is I'm going in recursively, um, and I'm refeeding into it the temporary string, so I'm never altering the original text string that's in there. Now the downside of doing that is when I go into the edit mode with, when the cursor shows up, um, I have to fix that it's kind of looking at the wrong thing. It's not looking at the temporary string, it's looking at the other string. So as I insert all these line feeds, then the two gets get out of sync. Um, I'm not totally satisfied with doing it in a recursive way. Um, so I need to see if there's not like a cleaner way to implement that. Um, but right now I just need to fix the, the cursor moving up and down. And by the way, the reason why I'm not altering the original string is it gets pretty messy when uh, you have the original string and then I insert a bunch of line feeds and then you change the spacing. Then I have to go back and figure out where were the line feeds inserted and how do I take them out and what if somebody, like for example, um, what if I want Text Mesh Pro to be on its own separate line? So here I forced a line feed, which means I shouldn't strip it manually. So anyway, it was getting kind of goofy. Um, so this way right now works because I can do it manually. And as you can see, it's never altered. Like Text Mesh Pro is always on its own line, which is here. I can go back in here and manually delete that line feed. Um, so I, I think the idea of not altering in any way the original string makes sense I just need now to fix that with the editing portion of it but anyway so that's where I'm at let me know if you have any thoughts or suggestions or ideas I'll try to upload uh, the code as well so you can take a look and let me know if you can come up with some other ideas on how to implement that uh, talk to you later bye